The arid climate of the Southern California desert means that good, reliable drinking water can be hard to come by. But what if we could drink ocean water? There's a process called reverse osmosis that allows us to do exactly that. Here's a quick tour of an industrial plant doing reverse osmosis in Carlsbad, California. Welcome to our tour of the Carlsbad desalination plant. This is our 72 inch intake pipe. We bring 100 million gallons of seawater in this pipe every day. Let's go check it out. This is our sand pretreatment building, where is the first stop the water makes when it enters the facility. This is where we take out any of the suspended solids that are in the water before we go to the reverse osmosis building. We're headed into the RO building, which is really the heart of the process. And this is really shocks people when they see it, the scale of what we're doing here. Welcome to our plant. So we're pushing the seawater through the membrane and the fresh water is coming out the blue collection tube. There are 16,000 of these reverse osmosis membranes in the plant the first water treatment plant in the state of California to have a net carbon footprint of zero. We're able to pressurize 46% of our building by using our waste pressure. So we are standing on our two and a half million gallon storage tank. Do you want to try the water? So this is where the 50 million gallons leaves the site every day and serves 400,000 people in San Diego County. The design and implementation of an industrial plant like this one is exactly the sort of work the chemical engineers would be expected to do. As such, we have a small reverse osmosis setup in our lab. Let's compare the setup in our lab to the one that you've just seen in this industrial plant. Hi, my name is James and I'm one of the research and development engineers in the chemical engineering program at the University of California, San Diego. I work together with my colleague Sabina to maintain the chemical engineering undergraduate laboratory. You'll meet Sabina in a demonstration video for the UV photocatalysis experiment. I'm here to talk to you today about our reverse osmosis experiment, which you see here up on the wall. Since our experiment can look a little bit confusing, I'll use this schematic that I retrieved from a Department of Energy document on reverse osmosis to clarify the various components as I move through the experiment. All reverse osmosis begins with feed water. In the case of the industrial video that you just saw, the feed water supply is the ocean. In our case, we'll make our own in this tank here. The water flows from the tank through a pump. The pump provides all the pressure for the reverse osmosis experiment and is a very important part in dictating the functionality of the system. After the pump, water will flow through a pre-filter. In the schematic diagram, the pre-filter is set before the pump, which is useful if you have water with unknown contaminants in it. But in our lab, we control our water supply quite carefully, and so the main source of contaminants in our system is the pump itself. Once the water has been filtered, it moves through a pressure measuring system. Here you see a pressure gauge on the schematic, but we use a flow meter in combination with a differential pressure gauge. The differential pressure gauge is the small black box underneath the reverse osmosis membrane. Using a flow meter together with a differential pressure gauge allows us to derive more information about our system. Finally, water flows into the reverse osmosis membrane itself. Within the reverse osmosis membrane, pressure provided by the pump pushes water through the individual layers of the membrane. Let's have a closer look at what the inside of a reverse osmosis membrane looks like. Here we have a much larger reverse osmosis membrane, which has had a portion cut away from it so that we can see inside of it. I'm going to use a schematic from the same Department of Energy document to help explain what's going on inside this reverse osmosis membrane. Feed water is passed into the reverse osmosis filter. The filter is full of semi-permeable membranes, which means that pressure inside the filter will cause water to pass through the membranes while particulate matter such as salt stays behind. Here you see the inside of our membrane is a tightly wound spiral, the membrane starting from the core and going out to the edge of the filter. At the core of the system is a perforated collection tube. Water that has permeated through all the membranes will eventually end up in this collection tube. We call this water the permeate. Lastly, let's talk about wastewater. Referred to as concentrate here in the schematic, we call it retentate because it retains its salt. 
This water flows out of the reverse osmosis filter, carrying excess salt away with it while it does. This is a final and very important step in the process. By carefully controlling our overall retentate flow, we can achieve a flow rate through the reverse osmosis filter with a satisfactory pressure drop across the membranes. And this will lead to a sufficient retentate flow that carries away salt in the membrane and a permeate flow that works for the purposes of our experiment. Now that you've seen our experiment in action, let's take a look at how the results are measured. So you'll see here I've drawn four samples of water. The first is tap water. This is deionized tap water. The second is salt water. This is my general tank water. And the third and fourth ones are my permeate and my retentate streams, as discussed previously. I'm going to measure these using a conductivity probe. This is basically a way of measuring saltiness of water. It works in microsieverts per centimeter. I'm going to start with measuring my salt water. I chose the salt water to be about as salty as some oceans are. There's about 4,000 microsieverts per centimeter. I'm going to then measure my permeate, and you'll notice that this is a considerably lower amount. Remember, the salt has been removed from this water. It's at about 350 microsieverts per centimeter. Next, I'm going to measure the retentate. This was the stream that retained the saltiness and carried it back out of the filter. And you'll see here it's even higher than the original salt water was. Reverse osmosis systems aren't just for industrial or experimental use, though. Many people in Southern California have one in their house. We also have one of these household RO systems in our lab. Let's take a look at it. Household reverse osmosis setups might be smaller than industrial or experimental ones, but they function in essentially the same way. You've still got an input water source, you've still got a pump, and you've still got a membrane. Filters are designed to be more easily interchangeable, which makes them somewhat consumable. This one will begin to work less efficiently and then will need to be replaced. Small reverse osmosis setups don't usually focus on salinity so much as on other minerals. This makes them useful for people who are at a remove from a municipal water supply and want to filter something like well water or for people who want to further filter their municipal water. By carefully choosing parameters of the system such as the pump or the reverse osmosis filter, chemical engineers can design a filtration system that meets the needs of wherever it will be installed. We've seen today that reverse osmosis is a powerful technique to remove fine impurities from water with a broad set of applications from the industrial scale right down to the household. Thank you very much for watching this video and we look forward to seeing you at University of California San Diego in the chemical engineering program. Thanks for watching.